One, two, check, check, one, two. Hi, you're with Scott. I'm Ganji Kid. It's midnight. It's always midnight. This is your right here and your left here. This is a mono. Let me just check we're rolling. Let me just check we're in full control. It says excellent connection. One, two, check, check, one, two. Hi. Yep, yep we're rolling. Okay, okie dokie. I've got your chat. You're on the screen. Bit of a funny episode today because today's my dad's birthday on not tomorrow the day after it'll be my mum's birthday we've just done the queen's funeral so all a bit up in disorder this week but we're back back on as standards and what we're going to be doing what we should have been doing today but can't really do it now so i'm just going to prep up and show you what we're doing tomorrow the day after probably the day after that probably a week knowing how long this will go on is madeline mccann we're going to take we've been asked in the past to have a little look at madeline mccann we've been interested in it so we're gonna have a little look but it came to the news today, so I think it's a good point to jump in. Madeleine McCann's parents lose challenge over court, over detective's book. So we're going to have a little look at it today. I'm going to show you what we're talking about. I won't be able to do the whole episode today because it's quite a lot. But we're going to have a little look at it today and show you what we're talking about. We're going to have a little look at the sniffer dogs. Sniffer dogs in Madeleine McCann's apartment. In the, We're going to have a look at that. We're going to discuss that. I'm also going to introduce you to something new. Oh, Subnautica. Oh. So it's not new, I mean, it's not new new, it's been out for ages, but something new that's happening with our stream, with our stream, something new that's happening on the old YouTube, something new that involves a certain channel called Battery Exhausted, my old B-side channel, you probably won't have this, you'll probably find it a bit more difficult to find than I did with just typing it in. It's a channel, it's called Battery Exhausted. So if you have trouble difficulty finding it, then you can go on this channel, channels, and then there it is over there, Battery Exhausted, boom. Videos, oh, what's happened here? Someone's done some chilling, some test streaming. I see, someone's done a stream reacting to a Nintendo Direct. Oh, it looks a bit rough. It's not like this stream with my lovely computer and lovely camera. <laughs> it's a little bit rough. Just I need to get a better camera and a few more lights and a bit of this and that and I'm setting up a second streaming space and it's a good idea because like today we'll be disturbed in the future so we're going to have that option and what I'm using it for at the moment is today's my main stream on YouTube isn't it this is the main stream this is Ganji Kid the channel and here we do live streaming like we're doing today is Foreigner Racist How Not to Stream Truth of Homeschool. Might even be looking at the old conspiracy theories all over again, as we do sometimes. There's a lot of Genshin Impact coming up on here, though. What's all that about? Well, I upload from Twitch to this channel. Some people say I should have two channels, maybe, a Genshin Impact channel. I want one channel, the hub channel, where every live stream that I do, live on the internet like we're doing now, here live. Live on Twitch. And Twitch, I'm playing all the Genshin Impact live on Twitch. So if you don't like Genshin Impact, don't worry. I won't be forcing you to watch it here. It'll just be uploaded here and you've got the choice. Now, sometimes during Genshin Impact, because I play this game, Genshin Impact, <laughs> sometimes during, it's quite a good game. It's got lots of story in it. It's like based on Kung Fu stories in ways, lots of culture, lots of interesting stories. It's If you watch it as a viewer that's not interested in games, you could almost imagine you were watching a big long manga or anime film, but with combat in. So I find that quite fun. It's quite good. It's an ongoing thing. So if you watch it, you might also get some other stuff, though. Look, reacting to Asmongold in that. In this one, we're talking about the death of the Queen. So sometimes I'm on Genshin Impact, and I do a bit of a side... Look, this one, I'm reacting to Blackpink. This one, I'm reacting to Blackpink. So we do a little bit of a side note. You know how I'm like. We do a bit of a tangent. <laughs> when we do a tangent on those streams, on the Genshin Impact streams, I realise you won't be able to fight... Like, if you're not watching the Genshin Impact, you're not going to watch all of those streams. You might miss certain bits. So what we also do... We have these other channels. I edit those bits and put them on what we call Ganji Cuts. So over here, if you're watching this mainstream channel, the main hub channel, you may not be seeing some of these little clip bits talking about these other things. Sometimes it's Genshin Impact. Sometimes it's general. Sometimes it's about Golden Island. Oh, Golden Island. Well, so what am I talking about then with having this battery exhausted channel? Well, I've set this up upstairs and in the evenings in my normal life, I do streaming in the daytime. At the weekends, we stream Genshin Impact twice. So I do two streams at the weekend, like, in a day. So I do, like, six episodes at the weekend of Genshin Impact. And then in the week, I'm supposed to be here about 2 p.m. GMT. 
Tomorrow's words on Wednesday. Words on stream. Couldn't be here for that. I'm supposed to be here in the daytimes doing you know, a different thing. It's not all gaming, is it? The world's not all gaming. Oranges are not the only fruit. So I do different stuff, don't I? I vary it. Variety stream, that's what we call that. And I tend to talk about things that are interesting to me, interesting to us on chat, interesting to you on the main channel on YouTube. But we've got this B-side channel. So what am I talking about here is that in the evenings, after all of that is said and done, I'll be upstairs, you know, I'll just be chilling. I might be watching a few YouTube videos. I might even play a few little computer games or so or something, you know, whatever. I do a little bit of chilling upstairs in the upstairs attic bedroom away from everyone else. You know, a little quiet time. And I realised to myself that quite a lot of that quiet time, I am actually on the computer. And I might be, for example. And this channel's already been monetized, you know, down the earth. It's already been monetized. So I might be, for example, playing Hearthstone and listening to a podcast. Kind of, we're trying to find the right weekend, but it's going to happen. Uh, there we go. Another legend in the chat. Prop goes by the name of Prophet. Question or comment, my friend. So here I am, just you know, quietly playing Hearthstone. If you're interested in the same sort of stuff as I am, the podcasts I listen to, you might find that interesting. There'll be it again. It'll be varied content, very little podcasty content in the corner. Sometimes not even that at all. Sometimes we'll focus on the game. But uh, so with that in mind, I've got it working. I've got it set up. It's not the particularly best camera, but we can improve that. We've got all the obs working, all the kilobytes. I've run the windows, the wires out the windows. I've set up a nice microphone, got an audio interface. There's lots gone along to make that another arm to the stream. So they were the test streams. Now I'm ready to actually kick on and go with it. So Subnautica is going to be the first game that we play up there. I'll just quickly show you Subnautica, then we'll get back to Madeline McCann and show you what wild stuff we're going to be talking about with that. Uh, Subnautica, though, fits this... I think it fits this uh, vibe perfectly. It's a survival... Oh, there's all sorts of stuff going on on the internet. I just wanted to... I just wanted a simple... Simple video of Subnautica. I'll just go back to the YouTube and ask YouTube instead. Subnautica. So... What happens in Subnautica is you crash land on an alien space... Oh, it's alien space, alien planet, Father was right. and then you sort it out. You like you have to survive on this alien planet. It's reassuring to know that underwater. There's a long plane walk through, no commentary. So this is what it looks like. It's very crispy. It's very nice actually. I've had a quick look at it. I opened it and looked at it, and it looks like it works really well. Very crispy, very nice. So for chilling in the evenings. And it'll be the evenings for me in the UK. I'm going to have to work to my time zone. Sorry if this is different from your time zone, but, you know, watch them when it's the evening for you. But for chilling in the evenings, we'll be doing some of this now, look. Playing some of this survival ocean-based game, floating around, investigating, collecting up to bits and pieces, creating our own survival pod. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? A survival game set underwater. You might even have heard of Subnautica. So it looks like lots of fun to me. And it looks like the right chilling vibe for the evenings where I can have this rolling. Maybe I have another little podcast in the corner sometimes, you know, listening to some other stuff. Uh, when I do the podcasts, I do talk about them. So there will be some conversational points that we can have. And that means that it's fair use, of course, because I'm not I'm transforming it by using it as a jumping off point and talking about the ideas there. But this all looks quite interesting, doesn't it? Hopefully it won't be too confusing. Hopefully it'll be nice and straightforward because it's not supposed to be a brain buster for me. It's supposed to just be a chill stream. So that's all going to happen on Battery Exhausted. This channel. Battery Exhausted. I'm going to resurrect that old channel. It, this old channel used to be... It used to be... Like, first of all, very, very start was ASMR B-Sides. Just a channel to upload some stuff to because I had some other stuff that I wanted to upload like a little live gig that my mates did um, the b-sides to my ASMR my dog did some singing along to a mouth organ look where'd you upload that where'd you upload that well not to the ASMR channel obviously so I set up this b-side channel that's all and then after it was the b-sides we started to actually use it for some edited content what we did was we were talking about veganism and we were editing those episodes, so we did some edited content. We did some vegan grunge vlogs from Down the Allotment. 
So we've been down there doing a potato reveal. So we've made a few videos on that. And then I sort of left YouTube for a, about a year, two years, maybe longer. Left it alone for a bit. So that channel went by the wayside. Then when we started out again as a streamer now in the new in the new form as a streamer, not an editor, an uploader, a streamer. I actually used this to edit my streams and upload them here before we started Ganji Cuts. So you'll see there's a load of these cuts from the stream now. I don't know if I should delete them. I'm going to leave the Journey of the Broken Circle up because it's a full playthrough of that game. That's where that lives, the full edited playthrough. So I might as well just leave those videos up, you see. And that takes us through Firewatch, which is a full edited playthrough of Firewatch. A full edited playthrough. Five episodes of that. It takes us through Firewatch to present day, really, where we're at now, doesn't it? So that makes sense. So that's the B-side channel. That's all set, all set to go. And we will start probably tonight with Subnautica, hopefully, depending on, you know, what goes on. And that's easy going, easy listening, laid back. Again, variety. It won't just be Subnautica. It'll be other stuff long on into the future, hopefully. So that's where we're getting started with that. What's coming up tonight, tonight, tomorrow, sorry, for you, tomorrow on this channel, is we're going to be talking about the Madeleine I. McCann stuff, aren't we? Madeleine I. McCann's parents lose a court challenge over the detective's book. That's in the news today. So what's happened is the parents of Madeleine I. McCann, Kate and Jerry, have lost the latest stage of a battle over legal judgments made about claims from a Portuguese police, not a Portuguese police detective, the Portuguese police detective, thank you very much, who was in charge of the investigation, <laughs> who claims he will not be silenced, so much so that he found he found it important that he should write a book. So we're going to be looking at the book. Kate and Jerry McCann appealed to the European Court of Human Rights over a Portuguese decision in their libel challenge. He alleged in a book that they were involved in, the, in her disappearance, in their daughter's disappearance. The McCann said they were naturally disappointed with the court ruling. Three-year-old Madeleine, blah, 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 blah. It's interesting, isn't it? We get these Madeleine McCann stories in the news whenever there's something they don't want us to look at. You know, when it's like, oh... Like, do you remember at the start of COVID, they actually used Madeleine McCann at the start of COVID, didn't they? Oh, we found Madeleine McCann's killer. We found Madeleine McCann's killer. We found this guy in Germany, and he's probably definitely done it, probably. At the start of COVID, that happened when they didn't think COVID was going to be that big and serious and they thought we, they could just distract us from the main news of them fucking up by showing us pictures of Madeleine McCann again. It's happening again, isn't it? Why would they want to distract us today, though? Why would they want to distract us today? It's almost as if Liz Trust today has defended the plan to boost the bankers' bonuses. <laughs> and instead of having that as headline news, which it fucking well should be, <laughs> lifting a cap on bankers' bonuses. Oh, that's going to help everyone. Thanks, Liz. Thanks for fixing my energy bills by making your friends really rich. You absolute massive chuffer. But I won't go on about it too much. Just you can see why, can't you? On certain days, other things end up clouding the news. <laughs> but I am going to take this. I'm going to go with this. Because I've always wanted a way in to the Madeleine McCann story on stream. There's been some really good... Uh, how do I say good? Um, if we look at Richard D. Hall... You might have seen this before, Richard D. Hall, or Richard Hall. He's done quite a lot of videos about Madeleine McCann. When I say quite a lot, Madeleine McCann. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. Now it goes on, yeah. <laughs> There's quite a lot of episodes about Madeleine McCann. In the main, they're about thirty minutes long. But some of them are hours. Some of them are hours long. Uh, Embedded Confessions is a really good one. We should have a look at that together. It's a really good one. It's quite long. There's two episodes of... Three episodes of 45 minutes. So there's quite a lot here. I think one of the problems Richard has is that he's got quite a lot of interesting information, but he's failed to sort of filter it through to the most meaningful... Like, wait, meaningful, uh, motivating, important short form like you know some people make youtube shorts richard's done like a full 24 hours of madly i'm a can content that you couldn't sit and watch in one day even if you tried <laughs> do you know what i mean so a lot of the information gets lost in there because it's so there's so much content and it like for tv for 
media consumption, people tend to edit down. Now, I understand that there's some things in there that you can't edit. That is just too much information. You can't edit it down. I get that. But you still need some kind of, you know, bullet point video. Because it would otherwise it takes someone like me to watch all of this to then relate to you in bullet points. And I'm not even good at keeping the episodes neat, am I? But we will be looking at some of the things that Richard has pre prevented, but also so presented. But also what I find strange or a bit frustrating, not really is the maybe the right word, is Richard D. Hall also deals with some other stuff that is less um like more spurious. So you can point at him and say, oh, he's got some funny ideas like UFOs and like magic medicine here or extraterrestrials on Earth. And it, it discredits his Madly Armour can work because at first you think he's a serious investigator. He's having a serious investigation of the old Madly Armour can. And then he puts out a load of conspiracy theory junkum. And, you know, he goes on about other stuff like all sorts of other, anything that you might say, you know, crop circles, for example, there's a funny one. Because we know crop circles were actually made as a hoax in the UK. Um, and what you do is you, you get a board of wood and you go around and you lay down the crops. Um, and it was proven. And the people that did it came out and said, no, we were doing it. It's a hoax. Uh, sorry. You know, it was proven to be a hoax. So they go out and they lay the crops down with the board of wood. And they even showed us how they did it. So I know that it's a hoax. So the fact that... Richard D. Hall has now got four videos about crop circles and energy weapons makes him look stupid and it discredits his other stuff which is a shame because some of his stuff is quite interesting but like I was saying as well is what I would say as well is that some of the Madeleine McCann stuff he, he falls into the same trap with that Madeleine he can't see the wood for the trees McCann and that's part of the I would say I've got to be careful what I say anyway, haven't I? Um, you can't see the wood for the trees. Some of it he's got bang right. Some of it he's really found some interesting stuff. And other stuff he's gone off on a fucking tangent for hours. And one of the things that I think the McCanns were able to do is they were able to use all the media hype, the fact they had media people from the right-wing media join their team early on. They were able to use all this media hype for a number of reasons. One, it made them a lot of money. They had this fighting fund didn't they? A Madeleine Anne McCann fighting fund, which eventually turned into their own personal finances. A fighting fund set up for the Leicester couple and their search for Madeleine Anne has helped meet their living costs. Initially, it wasn't set up to meet their living costs. Initially, it was to help find Madeleine, Madeleine Anne. But what happened over the years is eventually they put themselves on the board of directors and then they changed the reason for the fighting fund existing from a charity that's going to help I don't know if it was officially had charitable status, but to help find Madeleine. And then they changed its the wording to also include to help fund their living costs. So since, I don't know, you know, 2007, six onwards, uh, they've been using that money for themselves. That's their money now. They've been using it to pay for their houses and holidays and whatever else they want. It's their money now. So, uh, you know, the idea that you might create a huge media campaign to get a load of money into an account and then take the money... That looks bad on you, doesn't it? It makes it look like you were using that media hype so that you could get some money. Um, which is what they did. They did do that. They used all that media hype to, to personally become financially more well off. Uh, there's another aspect of it as well, which is all that media hype and all these, oh, I saw someone ringing up. It's discussed in the book and we will get to it in the episode where we discuss this book. Because on this YouTube channel, you can read... Sorry, on my YouTube channel, I will be reading the actual book. On this website, you can have a look at the actual book translated into English. But, you know, I'll be looking at the actual book they tried to ban. The actual book that they tried to ban. So, they made a lot of money. That's guaranteed, confirmed. I can close that window now, can't I? Uh, the other thing that happened with this smoke screen, I'll call it a smoke screen, a media smoke screen, is that it clouded the view of what they were doing. And it clouded the view of who was guilty and who was innocent and what was really the story. And he discusses in this book, you know, it's hard to do a police investigation when you've got people from all over the world ringing you up saying, oh, I saw Madeline in the shopping centre. Like, I think, again, I think, I think in inverted commas, you know, I'm not, I will find it in the book maybe in the coming episodes, but I think someone called them up from Brazil at one point and they had to send or, you know, liaise with the Brazilian police or send someone out there. And it turned out to just be bollocks. But, you know, things like that, instead of them getting right down to the truth of the facts and presenting a very clear case, it became clouded with this smokescreen of ideas. So that's another thing that the Madeleine McCann Fighting Fund did. You know, the Madeleine McCann 
please find Maddie, all the newspapers. It created this, whether they intended it to or not, I don't know, but it definitely did that and no one can argue against that because until now she's not been found and that means that every lead up till now has been spurious and, you know, we know there's been a lot of them. There's been a lot of them. So it seems that, because there can only be one correct answer, can't there? There can only be one truth. Everything else is bollocks. And by doing this fighting fund, by having this media campaign, by it always being hyped, 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 they brought in a lot of money from the goodwill of the people which ended up going into their pocket and they caused this even if they weren't trying to, when they realised this was causing this problem for the police where they've got too many leads and they're all bollocks, they should have said, oh, wait, we don't want that to happen. We want to find Madeline. So we're going to stop doing this. But they didn't. They carried on and made it worse. So, in fact, they did everything they could to make themselves a lot of money and to make it difficult to find Madeline. That's what they did. That's the truth. Because we know it's the truth because it's the truth. It's what happened. Um, hello, Snippies. Um, what on earth the bank? What on earth the bankers need help? Yeah. Um, she was taken. No, uh, we. Sh the story is that she was taken. There's no evidence really to suggest that she was taken, and they were parting at the poolside, as we will see when we go into it. They were quite close to the apartment in a little restaurant. Um, how old would she be now? She's dead, so she's not going to grow up. I mean, that's my opinion. <laughs> so she's dead, so she won't be old. Molding in the sea rotting in the sea somewhere. She'd have probably fully rotted now. That's how old she is. Um, but yeah, I won't be able to go into it all today because I've only got an hour quickly before my dad's birthday and we have to go out. But I'm lining up what we're going to do this week in an interesting way, hopefully. I hope you saw this early bit about Subnautica as well. The, we've got a game called Subnautica to play on the upstairs stream and now I can't even find the damn picture of it. Um, so tonight, hopefully, I'll be playing Subnautica upstairs. You know, we'll actually be able to run a stream after I come back from this family thing. Uh, and it'll be a nice, chill, underwater adventure. And you barely remember the details. I mean, I remember the details. You know what I'm like. You know what I'm like. I've got a big, big things to say about this. Like, kind of big things. I hope that I can be the first person to really clearly present the truth. And what we'll do is we'll look at the books that were written, the book that was written by... The detective, the lead detective, the head detective, and this guy wasn't some idiot, look. Like, this guy is a serious bloke, yeah? He's the head lead detective on the investigation in Portugal. They put him in charge because he's a good cop. And he did his investigation, and the people that didn't like it were the McCanns. So he wrote a book about it. Now, he wasn't so confused. He wasn't so confused. He's actually got a theory here, look. According to you, what happened on May the 3rd, 20... This is what he says in his book. So I'm just going to read it out, out loud on the internet and I'm not going to be banned because I'm reading it out loud from a quote from him. Madly I McCann died from accidentally falling behind the sofa in the living room of the apartment. That couch had been moved when the alarm over the alleged disappearance was raised. I think someone discovered the body, concealed it, cleaned everything up and pushed the sofa to the window. Right, that's his conjecture, his idea. And how does he think this? Because in this part of the apartment, we'll come to look at this. You know, I'm going to give you the, the outline now. Um, this part of the apartment had a sofa in it, look. These are the, the sniffer dogs. So what we think happened, me and the lead detective on the case, what they think happened is that they wanted to put Madeline to bed. She wouldn't go to bed, whatever. They're both doctors. They in some way sedated her. That's one option. I'm not saying it's definitely happened. You know, I'm not getting myself banned off YouTube, but that's what he thinks might have happened. Or there's another thing that he thinks might have happened, which is this sofa was pushed up against this window and the kids were playing on it and jumping around and someone could have jumped and hit their head, fallen behind the sofa, got themselves into trouble. And when the parents returned to the apartment, oh no, this is a problem. Look, my daughter's on the floor and she's nearly dead and she's having some sort of seizure, choking on her own vomit, maybe sedated and choking on her own vomit, something like that. They're, they're ideas that have come about. Now, why have these ideas come about? Right, why have these ideas come about? Because after and during the investigation, so after Madeline disappeared and during the initial investigation, they got this dog in, and this dog's a cadaver dog. Very reliable, very reliable cadaver dog used in court cases as evidence and brought in for that exact reason. And what these cadaver dogs did is they indicated the... Uh, their indication is to bark and to sit and to you know do whatever. They indicated the presence of either death 
a dead body or blood. And they did that in the apartment that they were staying in. And then there's this sofa that was pushed up against this wall. Was this sofa always against the wall? Was it always against the wall? We don't know. But we know that the dog's pretty fucking interested in it. Look. The dog wants to get behind it. So they get the dog behind the sofa. And the dog's going nuts. So now we've got a cadaver dog brought in by the investigators. Very reputable. Like we've got other videos of this as well, which we'll look at in, fu in the future episodes where they do it in their car as well. Um, so we've got a cadaver dog in the, in the, uh, you know, in the apartment. It's indicating and it indicates around this sofa. So they do more tests and, you know, they get their forensics in and they find one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and so like about 20 different spatter marks up this wall. So we've got all these spatter marks up the wall. And I'll go into it now while I've, got, while I've still got half an hour on my episode today uh, and we're going to get into it of course um, the spatter marks on the wall are then taken they're taken you know with the little forensic swabs to the lab and they do their Portuguese lab forensics on it now in Portugal you can determine what those spatter you get the, the swab you determine where the DNA came from okay you determine whose DNA it is it came back to be like 90% or whatever, they, you know you know what I mean? They always say like 99.9% .9 or whatever it is. The, the high chance, the 99% chance that it was either Madeline, one of her siblings or her mother. You know, it was McCann female DNA. Like they, they narrowed it down very narrow to either her mom or, or one of the children. Uh, I don't think you can be as exact as you'd like to, you know, you can't say it's definitely Madeline's. I don't think we've got Madeline's DNA as an example to compare it to, but it came back very close match. Do you know what I'm saying? Very, very close match. The other thing is that when they took these these spatter samples, they suggested the police that took the samples, the forensics, said it, it's probably blood because it looked like blood. But when you go to the lab, right, you've never seen this. Yeah, this is weird, isn't it? You've never seen this. I wonder why you've never seen it. I wonder why you've never seen it. <laughs> It's because Madeline I. McCann's parents, the millionaires who had a millionaire fighting fund, which was put into their own pockets with detectives and, and all sorts of media people on their team, have spent years trying to make this huge media smokescreen where we're pointing fingers everywhere around the world, aren't they? They're always looking for a new, a new lead somewhere around the world. Because every time we get one, it's a new big media story. The media love that. Um, Christian... What's his name? Brookheimer? No, Christian. I've forgotten his name now. Christ, I'll just put Christian Madeline. They had this new suspect, didn't they, come out? Do you remember this guy? New suspect. New suspect. And it happened when COVID came out. So when they didn't want us to look at the news, because Boris Johnson had said outright, Boris Johnson was quoted. Right? You can go back and you go back and look at the timeline. Boris. Johnson, um, let it rip, COVID, uh, he wanted there to be, what do you call it, herd immunity. Initially, Boris Johnson didn't want to, uh, didn't want to put in any, any, any uh, mitigating, Boris Johnson didn't want a lockdown, he didn't want any of that. He suggested that we should take it on the chin and just let it go. And then he was argued with by, you know, sensible people. And like a couple of days later, we went into like these lockdown measures as led by the scientists. But initially, Boris Johnson didn't want to do that. He was happy to let it go and just, you know, fucking rip into people and kill as many people as, who, as whoever. Didn't care. Right, that was his initial thing. When that happened, they didn't want that to be the big news. So all of a sudden, we had this new guy in the news, Madeleine McCann's new... Like, for a couple of weeks there, while COVID was really bad at the start, to, to stop you from worrying about it and reading it in the news, we had something else that was the big headlines. And bear in mind, for the average Joe on the street, this is what would be all over the front page of the Sun newspaper. Do you know what I mean? So, and it turns out, months and months later, you know, two years down the line, no, he's not. No, he's not. He's not. So what? Oh, oh, we just, you know, forget that now. Forget that now. 
That's the sort of thing. They use Madly I McCann to bring up in the news when they don't want us to see something because they know it's controversial. It always gets eyes on it. And they know the people that look at it are the people that really should be looking at the other thing. For example, today. That's what happens there. But there is this other deeper story behind it, isn't there? So yeah, you've never heard the truth. The truth. You've never heard what the detective in Portugal that ran the crime scene thinks, have you? And that's because they've been struggling to keep his mouth shut. <laughs> All sounds a bit sinister when you consider they became millionaires, didn't they? And they took the money for themselves. That's a fact, proven. Um, happy birthday to an idea. Um, so going on with this, uh, we've got these cadaver dogs that I was saying, yeah? They've gone in, they've sniffed, they've indicated... They found these blood spots. They've sent them to the lab. They've come back from the lab. From the lab, ninety-nine or ninety-five percent female uh, Kate's lineage, either Kate McCann or one of her female daughters. Uh, that's the thing that I mean. I'm, I might be slightly off the mark with that. I'll say because I'm not reading the book right now. But this is what came back anyway. Now in Portugal, there's an issue. There's an issue. When I take that to court, when I take my statement, my forensic lab oh this is what they've told me and hand that in at court you have to be very careful don't you with these sort of things especially with court and um you know it's people's lives you have to be right down the letter to the detail so what they've got in portugal is they've got a system where you you say that that is you can say categorically from their lab records that that is kate mccann's dna or madeline mccann's dna or you know within 99 percent certainty it's come from one of those people you're allowed to say that it's her DNA. What you're not allowed to say is that it's her blood. It's just a little, it's a little, uh, what would you call it? Not loophole, but, you know, it's just a little detail in their law. You have to say it's their fluid because it could be that blood mixes with mucus or it could be that it's a mucus or it could be that it's this. You can guess because you can see it on the wall. It's red. That's blood. But, you know, you with your eyes, that's not forensic science. And when they put it through the machine and it, you know, spins the, the blood into, takes it down to its constituent parts, you get the DNA. Once you've done all that, you can no longer determine that it's blood. You only know for a fact that it's fluid and it's their DNA, right? So what they have to say in Portugal, they have to say it in court, is that this is the fluid that we found not the blood but the fluid that we found so it never came out in a big way that madly i mccann's blood was found behind the sofa i mean that sounds like a fucking proper when i say proper that sounds like a proper headline doesn't it madly i mccann's blood found behind sofa never came out because they couldn't they didn't no one said that the portuguese police wouldn't say that because they know that when it goes to court they can't prove it so no one said it was her blood apart from the people who took the samples <laughs> And the cadaver dogs, they're the people who indicated it was probably blood because in their opinions, being humans with eyes, being dogs with noses, in their opinions, it was blood. Cadaver dogs will will signal for human blood, won't they? So, And this, the presence of a corpse. So we've got that to go on, but we can't legally call it blood. And that was one of the problems that they had with the case then is that, you know, this theory here, According to you, what happened on May 3rd, Madly I McCann died from accidentally falling behind the sofa in the living room. The He's giving them the good grace to say it's an accident. The couch had been moved when the alarm over the alleged disappearance was raised. Right, it's part of the evidence that the sofa had been moved after they raised the alarm. It's interesting, isn't it, that you push the sofa up against those evidences that have something dangerous to threaten you with. Uh, I think someone discovered the body, concealed it, cleaned everything up and pushed the sofa to the window. That's the head detective of the Madly I McCann case. And he's got the evidence there, but he can't say it's blood. And we've got the videos of the uh, cadaver dogs. And they also had this hire car that the McCanns were driving around in days after Madly Iron's death. They have a hire car. And again, the cadaver dogs indicate in the boot of the car. So it's strange to me that a cadaver dog specialized, you know, police trained, legitimate, brought in for the very reason to try and find this little girl in the car park, indicating on their car, in the boot, in the trunk, 
cadaver, cadaver dog, hired car, very interested, you know, getting very eggy with it all, in the footwell of that car, look, footwell of that car, I found a body, very, very interested, isn't it? It's what they call a positive, positive from the dog there, so they do all the swabs and all that, you know, and all this, don't they? in the boot so this is where they've got their evidence from <laughs> and that's what's recorded in this book amongst other stuff and that's why this book is they're trying to ban it aren't they they're saying that it's libel because he suggests their daughter died and that they were involved but then again i mean i mean i'm gonna say i i agree with him i'm not gonna say it on the internet that i think this and that i'm gonna say he thinks it because then i'm not liable as some i he is and i'm just reporting what he said so and they do that on the BBC News, so I think that's okay, isn't it? Although on the BBC News, they won't report the exact reasons, will they? They'll say, he alleged it in a book, but they won't say that the sniffer dogs found the DNA of a female McCann, which, in all, to in all, all intents and purposes, if you work in this field, you'll say, oh, that's blood, you know, we know it's blood. For our investigation, we assume it's blood, but for going to court, we can't use it as proof evidence. That's not proof of, like, we need to find her body. We can't use that. But for us as investigators, we assume X, Y, Z, because that's why we're doing it, for Christ's sake. It's just a little detail in the law that we can't name it as blood, because once it's been through the processor, you can't determine if it's blood. You can only determine its DNA. So they're not saying that, <laughs> are they? And they're also not saying that Madeleine Pe McCann's parents became millionaires by putting themselves on the board of directors for the fighting fund, and that all the t-shirts and all the stuff and all the sales and all the books has ended up in their pocket. And they can't also say, or they won't also say, that uh, that all the different ideas and all the different... You know, and Richard D. Hall's a bit... Um, he's a bit guilty of this as well. Like, all the smokescreen, Mad Deer, Leon, McCann, all the smokescreen, like, was it this guy that took her? Or was it these, the, the, he does this whole series called The Phantoms, which is, there's lots of sightings of someone carrying a little girl. And every sighting of someone carrying a little girl requires a police investigation, doesn't it? And then your resources are being taken away from the real investigation. And why would they want to do that? Well, maybe because the real investigation was bang on them, was pointing their fingers at them and saying, hang on, we've got evidence that points at you. There's a little few more pieces that, are in here that I might be able to bring out. There's 22 chapters and we will be looking at it on stream starting tomorrow. So I don't know how far we'll get and what we'll get through. But what I intend to do is just read the, the, the chapters with you on stream and see what we think. Um, you agree dogs' evidence is very worthy, says Rudy. Dogs do not talk and their testimonies cannot be used as it can't be easily processed. And it is. Exactly, exactly. And these sniffer dogs, there's videos of them. It was used by the police legitimately and you'd want them to use these sniffer dogs, wouldn't you? The McCanns would want it. But strange to me what's strange to me is that once we've got these sniffer dogs involved and once now that we've got the evidence from them the McCanns aren't broadcasting that around the world with their media team that they're not using their millions of pounds and fighting fund to to broadcast the legitimate evidence and if they didn't like it they're not using another set of sniffer dogs to say oh hang on look we brought in other sniffer dogs and they didn't indicate they're not directly approaching this evidence whatsoever. They're ignoring it and creating lots of other stories that disguise this in a way. So that's where I'm coming from. I'm coming from following the reports of the lead investigator. And it involves another couple of things which I'll mention now before I have to go. Because today's just a quick one, unfortunately, because I've got to go to my dad's birthday, which is going to be okay. But uh, I do like to be here. Um, I remember dogs at an abandoned hospital, user, they barked their heads off at the stairs that led to the old morgue. They didn't want to go down there. Bloody hell. They could probably smell it, can't they? Yeah. Um, God, I think it would be thick with the, the scent of death, wouldn't it, the morgue? Uh, so they've got a chapter here on suspicious behaviour and contradictions. There's all sorts of stuff. It Just to me, when you look at it logically, the McCanns have done everything they can to 
cloud the investigation, to confuse the investigation, to bring up a million leads all over the world. And we know that only one of them can be the truth. So if you've got 60 different sightings all over the world and you want the police to investigate them all, you know that only one of them can be a correct sighting, if at all. And that that's, that's going to cause them a lot of silly work, isn't it? Silly, busy work. Who leaves their child alone with the guy? I will say, actually, this was a big contentious aspect of it. Um, my parents were single parents, like my parents divorced when I was young and I was quite used to being left on my own sometimes to be honest even on holidays sometimes my, um, my mom be happier. So I'll do the tippies swish. in just a second uh, my mom tended to uh, stay with us and you know tended to be around us but if there was a kids club certainly or if there was a um, you know sometimes you get put to bed don't you when you're a kid you get put to bed and your parents might go down to the, the bar in the hotel and be down there I wouldn't necessarily have expected my mom to leave the hotel, go across the road to a restaurant, but if we were in a hotel when we were little kids, it's possible that we could have been left. I'm not 100% like, I don't think it's necessarily the best thing in the world, and I don't think it's necessarily the most uh, um, sensible thing, but I can see that it happens, which is why I think this was an accident. I think they were maybe the not, not the best of parents in that aspect. I mean, I'm not saying my mom was the best parent and left me on my own when I was a kid, but um, you know, sometimes it happens, and I think sometimes you can have ha unhappy accidents but i think they were a bit more negligent because they just didn't care as much and i think that leads to this idea that when there was an accident that attitude of negligence not caring it comes through in the idea they might cover it up rather than announce to the world that because of course logically you could say oh sorry about check my tippies logically you could say that uh if you found your child dead right if you found your child dead but you also had two more children then going to the authorities might not be your first choice because you say to the authorities, I left them on their own, I went out to dinner, then you've got a problem because the social services might want to take your other children off you. You're not responsible, you can't look after your kids. So I think I think that Jerry, and we'll look at the psychology of their interviews as well in, in future episodes, I think Jerry was quite mean to Kate and said, look, they're going to take your kids off you if you tell everyone. They'll take your kids off you. And she thought, I can't have that. I've already lost one. I'm very confused. I'm very emotional. I've just found out my daughter's dead. So I would rather go along with any story whatsoever than lose all of my kids. I just it, She must have been in a massively messed up headspace and gone along with this. And as soon as you start going along with a lie, you can't go back, can you? You turn out in public and say, I was a liar all this time. Oh, that'd be even worse. So then all of a sudden she's in this and you see it a lot in the interviews where she's got this sad face while Jerry takes over. Um, we'll look at the interviews and we'll do the psychological analysis. We certainly will, if we can, because they've tried to remove as many from the internet as possible. I remember at the time there were quite a lot and it was quite important to share these ideas, wasn't it? She find Maddie, find Maddie. And then for some reason, they didn't want those things on the internet. All these videos of them trying to find Maddie had to get taken down even though they're doing a fighting fund to try and find us. So it was very strange the way they controlled that as well, wasn't it? Um, my snippies, tippies, birthday tippies for my dad's party. Uh, yeah, that's true without my dad. You know, I've got to be nice to him, but everyone's a bit cross today. Thank you for the tippies. That's massive. Um, everyone's a bit cross today, really, with it all, I think. Uh, and I've been on the butt end of it all, uh, just trying to find out what time we're supposed to be going. Yeah, it's been a bit of a shitter. I'm not going to go on about it in the interview, in the interview, on the internet. Um... Thank you very much for the tippies, though. It's massive. It does really make a difference. Uh, so hopefully we'll get to the truth of this. There's another couple of things I wanted to say as well before, you know, to line up, which is that, uh, what was it? Yeah, the two things that they did that were even more weird was they hired a hire car and they went driving around. They're very connected to the church. And it's possible, it's not certain, but it's possible that they put the dead child in the back of that car after having hidden it somewhere Maybe at the church. Maybe they used the crypt of the church to hide their dead child. Maybe they even confessed to the church and the people at the church and said, look, we can't lose our other children. Please help us. She's dead now. It was an accident. I think, like I said, maybe they sedated her. This is my opinion and also the opinion of Gonzalo Amaro. So I'm re referring to his book, which is contentious, but not libel. Okay, so he he seems to think that maybe they accidentally killed her through sedation or she had some sort of accident in the room. They tried, the reason these blood spatters are up the wall, remember we said these blood spatters, right? We know you've been joking about the net, poking about the net fishy. <laughs> poking about the net fishy, yeah. So I've, I read that because the net is internet, isn't it? But I read it as like fishing net 
because you said fishing. So I was like, I've been fishing. I've not been fishing. <laughs> yeah. Um, what they did is uh, <laughs> they came back, realized the daughter was in trouble. Maybe not dead, maybe choking, maybe um, swallowed her own vomit or whatever, banged her head on a seizure. And they tried to revive her. And they did what any good doctor would do is perform CPR. And when you perform CPR on someone that has some sort of blockage in their throat or blood in their system, they cough it out. <coughs> and that cough spatter goes all up the walls. And that is very consistent with the way they found those spatters. It's almost as if someone had done CPR lying on the floor. Now, we know they didn't do it to Kate, so that rules her out. So the only person that we can't rule out is Madeline, isn't it? Because we can't, we haven't got her body or personage to talk to. So the fact that she went missing is actually, if you had accidentally killed your child or led, or your negligence had led to the death of your child and you tried to revive them and it had gone wrong and you're a doctor, because they both are, what's your next step? What's your next step? Do you come clean? Obviously, they didn't. If that had been the case, they didn't. We know because they didn't. So maybe the doctor, Dr. McCann, says to his wife, look, she's dead now. We're, we're doctors. We know that this wasn't our fault. It was a, a mistake. It was an accident. We don't deserve to lose our children. So the best thing we can do is put on our doctor heads. We see death every day and we have to be cold about it. We have to not take that home. Put on our doctor heads and deal with this. Get rid of the body. Make sure that our other children don't lose their parents. And then when the money started coming in, he started saying to his wife, oh, I think he started saying to his wife, oh, this is like Madeline's gift from us. The religious bit came in. She's up in heaven now looking over us. Her gift to us is that she's going to help make us millionaires. And you suffered because she's dead, but we're going to be millionaires. So just go along with what I'm saying, Kate, and everything will be all right. I think he did that. I think he twisted it that way. So you get the body. You dump it in the back of the car. They're big friends with this church. The big friends with the church. So the church is, again, it's this strange level of sympathy that you could imagine might happen that, okay, these people have come to me, says the little priest in little Portugal. They're big on the church. They've had a mistake. If I grasp them up, oh, they put him in an ethical position. Maybe they didn't even tell anyone. Maybe they just used the church for praying and snuck her in. But, you know, they got these keys to the church, didn't they? They got the keys to the church and they went in and out of this church all the time. And the church won't be involved in the investigation. They're, they're saying no thanks. We don't want to be involved in an investigation. We're the church. So, you know, that's that seems appropriate if you've just had a dead daughter to go to the church and try and bury her, doesn't it? Or make you, make you, you know, make your sense with God if you've just been through a death. Not so appropriate if you're looking for someone. Probably wouldn't be going in and out of that church all the time if you're looking for someone, would you? But they did, and, and that's how that happened. So then maybe, and it's just a maybe, they used a, that hire car to transport her from the church to the seaside and dump her in the sea because they were out on a boat, weren't they, um, some weeks after her death. Again, that's a fact, not something I'm going to get booted off the internet. They were out in the sea on a boat some weeks after her death. Uh, so there's, there's a story that, I'm just telling us a story that's come through the book from the lead detective on the case that Madeline McKenna's par parents want to shut down. They don't want that to be the story. That's not acceptable. But sadly for Madeline, and sadly for the rest of the world, this seems to be the only story that holds water, the only story that makes sense, doesn't it? How do you know it was her blood, holiday fact, blood dated by the dog? Um, we know, what we know is that... Uh, the spatter marks on the wall that they found, we know that they, the people that took the swabs, they said they thought they were blood because of the colour, right? Um, so they didn't know whose blood, but they thought it was blood. We know fact two, so what are you claiming? What, like I'm saying, they, I'm not claiming it. Gonzalo Amaral's claiming it. It says it in his book, he was the lead detective. I'm going to go with the lead detective on the case, which is that she died from accidentally falling behind the sofa or being sedated. Uh, that I'm throwing that in because it's another conjecture. Uh, it might have been an accident that the couch had been moved when the alarm over the alleged... They pushed the couch against the wall to hide this evidence. Someone discovered the body, concealed it, cleaned everything up and pushed the sofa to the window, the lead detective says. So I'm saying that she was found on the floor by one of her parents, either because they sedated her or she accidentally banged her head or some shit. They tried to revive her, it went wrong. She's dead. And instead of telling the authorities, they covered it up. That's what I'm saying. The reason I'm saying that, like I said, the blood, the dog, and dated. It can't be dated, but they know they were in this apartment for a small amount of time because they're on holiday. They know that this swab, the people that took the swab said they thought it was blood. 
They sent it to the lab. The lab comes back. This is McCann DNA from the female line, 99%, 95%, whatever. You know, I'm not reading the report now, but that's what came back. And so they were able to say it's either Kate's blood or it's one of the, the children's blood. That's, that's all. But the lab report doesn't come back with blood written on it. Because once they put it through the machine, once the Portuguese authorities have put it into their legal statement, you can't legally say it's blood because it's it's fluid, it's DNA. That's all you can legally say, it's DNA. We're not testing for if it's blood, we're testing for whose DNA it is. So there's no way of us proving whose... There's only a way of us proving whose DNA. It could be mucus, it could be other forms of fluid. We're not saying categorically in court that it's blood. However, the people that took the swabs thought it was blood. But we can't say it in court. You know, it's one of these things where you could know something for a fact, but unless you can prove it in court, you're not allowed to say it. So being very careful, they don't say it's blood. But we all know they thought it was blood, right? So that's why he's come to this decision, is that she died in the apartment, that some way they tried to revive her because those blood spatters are consistent with the blood that comes from you when your chest is being compressed or, and you're coughing up rather than... If you bang your head and the blood goes flying, it's a different kind of spatter mark. Um, so, uh, uh, why did they not look for hemoprotein processing? It's because of the Portuguese system. The Portuguese system is not the same as the rest of the world. They might not be as modern in some aspects as the rest of the world. It's just the Portuguese system. That's the bottom line. And when they came to, you know, when they came to ask these questions, why didn't you prove that it was blood? That's what they said. Sorry, Gonzalo Amaral was, was had to say, but our system isn't that tight. Sorry. That's all they had. You know, they should have done, shouldn't they? It is something you can do, but the, the Portuguese system doesn't do it as a matter of course. That's why. That's all. Um, I don't know about PSYOP. I'll tell you what the PSYOP is, is that after the events have happened and the media have discovered that this sells fucking loads of newspapers and that millions of pounds are being funneled into a fighting fund, that's when the... Psyop, I mean, it's a psyop. It's just people with selfish interests get involved. And the interest is to keep pushing it in the papers, to keep promoting it so we can fill up that fighting fund. And the fighting fund started to go to some big media moguls and some big lawyers and the McCanns themselves. They used, they took the money for themselves. So that's all. They turned it into a profit maker. I don't know about psyop. The other thing that is true, though, of course, Rudy, is that on days where they don't want you to look at the news, they print something about Madeleine McCann because it's popular newsworthy. The government have been doing this for a long time, not just the government, you know, the, the right-wing people that run the media have been doing this for a long time. When there's something big in the news, they've got another story that they can sort of push over the top. Liz Truss has been very lucky recently the Queen died because it's absolutely taken the spotlight off her and her fucking horrific politics. But on the day that she announces she's going to lift the cap on the bankers' bonuses, it's the same day that we've got a big news story about Madeleine I. McCann again. It's just one of those things, isn't it? That's how I'd go with the PSYOP, though, is that, you know, this Christian, Bro whatever his name was, the other suspect that was came out during COVID, Madeleine Mc McCann suspect. If I just put that, it'll come up, won't it? Because there's loads of suspects, loads of suspects, but no one's pointing the finger at the actual parents. But this guy was this big suspect recently. When COVID kicked off, on the same day that Boris Johnson said, we don't want to do any lockdowns, I'd rather just let it rip, and was proven to be a fucking idiot, and a horrific thing to say, because he meant that he wanted to kill loads of old people, they printed all this stuff about Madeleine McCann's new suspect. Suddenly that was in the news when they wanted all the people to get in, get it. The, the PSYOP is confuse the masses. That's all. Just confuse them. Confuse them. Uh, yeah, the case has confusion over it. Yeah, the confusion in the case is not there in the case, actually, in actual fact. The man that ran the, um, the case, you know, the actual case, the man that ran the actual police investigation, he's not confused. He's got a definite idea. And he wrote it all in a book because he wasn't able to put it out through his investigation because it all got shut down, didn't it? It all got shut down. He got taken off the case. But uh, initially, in the first year, there wasn't any confusion in the case. It wasn't a psyop. This man from Portugal, this honest policeman, told everyone what he thought. And then everything got picked up and started, oh, whoa, 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 you know? And that's at the point where the McCanns are millionaires by then, and they're involved in some very shady dealings with some very right-wing media people from the Daily Mail and other such papers. Uh, that's all fact. 
Um, you just discovered what a chip butty is and you're disgusted. <laughs> it's a chip sandwich. Chris, what would you call it in America? You'd call it a fries sandwich, wouldn't you? Fries sub. Um, she's dead. Yeah, she is. She's rotting in the sea. Or she's already rotted in the sea and, you know, turned into mush. So the police were really certain about what they thought had happened. And when they put that out there, they got shut down. And the reason you haven't heard about it is because a million other things have been published in our media. Which is strange, isn't it? It's strange. So that's what I think about that. Um, I had one more thing to say about it, but maybe it'll come up when we look at it. So what I wanted to do, which I'm not able to do today because of time constraints, is literally just go through this book. It's been published on the internet on this blog site and they've translated it into English. So what you can do is you can check chapter one like this and here's chapter one and we can read it. So we'll read it. It might take a while. There might be some stuff that's not really that interesting that we'll skip through, like, from time immemorial, the Algarve has been a region open to the world. Its geostrategic position, its sky and climate, and the hospitality of its habitants have always attracted people from other regions. That's not important. We'll skip through that. But the bits about Madley and Ayn McCann and the case, and there's one other thing I wanted to say that will come up, is that Gonzalo Amaral contests that early on in the investigation, and I'll finish with this point because I've got to go soon. But early on in the investigation, they found they had a sighting. Um, I do not know, Scott, but how you've handled this, I think, is unwise. I like you and you can approach this from a better angle. I don't know. What do you mean? How do you mean? I'm just stating what other people's opinions are on the internet. I'm covering Madeleine McCann's story because it's in the news today. They've lost the channel challenge over the book. The challenge is over this book, so I'm looking at the book and the things they're challenging, and the fact that they lost the challenge means this is not liable. So I think I'll be okay. I mean, I don't know what angle you want me to approach it from. I'm going to just tell you the truth, as it seems from the people that were there. Anyone that's not really there, anyone that's not, you know, not got any truth to tell us, I'm going to dis discard. But the people that were there doing the investigation, I'm going to read through their, their ideas and just relay it to you. And then, they're my ideas as well now, in a way, because they seem to be well-evidenced. I don't know what that is. Oh, that's the video game music. They seem to be well-evidenced. And we'll look at any video we can of the Madly I McCann parents in interviews. And surprisingly, there's not that much, is there? Because they tried to get it all removed from the internet. But um, there are still some. There are still some. So we'll do that. And I'm not the first person to do it, am I? Don't think it's. don't think there's anything wrong. It's just an interesting news story, isn't it? Uh, vinegar's nice. We just call it vinegar. We don't call it malt vinegar. We just call it vinegar. <laughs> you tell me what I've done wrong. I'll, I'll listen to what you're saying. Tell me what I've done wrong, and I'll, 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 I'll you know, I'll consider it. If you think I'm going to get murdered by the MI5, then I don't think they give a shit about this anymore. I think they're on to in more important things. I think Madly I McCann's parents have probably been abandoned by them now, and they just don't give a shit anymore. Um, or maybe you think she's still alive and been passed around by pedos, but I don't. I think that's, you know, if they were going to sell their children to pedos, they'd have sold the younger ones or, you know, sold more of them. I don't know. I, I just think it makes sense where I've just had it described to me by Concarlo Advarel and uh, relayed it to you. Anyway, um, there's one other thing that come come up that I will just want to say quickly while we're giving the intro and then we'll do the deep ones later, um, which is that... Uh, they had a suspect. It was over somewhere else in Portugal, a couple of hours' drive away. Not a suspect, sorry. They had a sighting, a couple of hours' drive away. And in the first sort of week of the investigation, it was early in the investigation, I can't remember the exact time scale, but uh, he describes it in the book. In the, in the uh, initial stages, he asks Kate, can you come with me to go and have a look at this CCTV and see if this is Madeline, because we think it might be. And like, it's quite important, because you can verify whether it is or not. And then we can either jump on it or, you know, whatever. And she was well cross, well eggy. She didn't want to go. She went, nothing, Scott, I'm sorry. It's all right, fair enough. You know, it's all right. I don't, yeah, you don't have to apologise. I love it when you speak your mind. Capital K's got that bang right. I'm not angry in any way. You don't have to apologise to me. You can think what you think and you can tell me what you think. It's fine. It's fine. I might even come around to the way you think. Unless I hear it from you, I won't understand it and be able to reason with it. So um, if you've got different ideas, it's fine. You know, it's fine. Uh, so anyway, she was she was um, asked, can you come in this car 
car and go to see this CCTV. And he said, and it's not me saying it, it's him saying it in his book, he said she didn't want to. He said she was well eggy about it. Like on journey, she was really eggy and in a bad mood. I mean, she would be in a bad mood because she's very tired. You know, very tired and looking for a daughter. But uh, it might be that she just didn't believe that this was a realistic sighting and it was a waste of her time. And when you read into the psychology, her behaviour seems to state that. It seems to be like she couldn't be arsed with it. And why wouldn't you be arsed with it if your daughter was missing? You'd be desperate, wouldn't you? You'd be down there. Yeah, just let me see, let me see. Instead, she was like, do I have to? It's not, it's not going to come to anything. So that was a very big red flag. So there's some things to think about. Um, do you not think it's right everyone's okay talking about horrific events in a glib manner? All oh, right, I see what you mean. Like, you know, she's rotting now. Yeah. I mean, it's been a long time. It's been a long time. And sometimes I'm very sympathetic. I am, you know, it's sad that they killed her. That Goncalo Amarel thinks they killed her, their own daughter. It is sad. That is sad. That's true. We should be more respectful of Madeline. I would agree with that. Um... I just think also I should be kind of brutal about it and honest because these are the true facts or seem to be the true facts through the eyes of the lead investigator and that sometimes brutal honesty is neither... Um, and I, I don't want to say like I'm a bit autistic because it's rude about to talk about autism in that way but uh, sometimes I, I think I will agree with you that I don't have the same compassion as other people about facts even when they pertain to little girls because um, they're facts... So the way I see it as facts, I just see it as like I'm not being, I'm being dispassionate, I suppose is the right word. And I agree that can come across as being kind of uh, crass or um, inhuman, inhumane. Yeah, agree, agree. And I'll tell you what, I'm very much more humane about animals than I am about people. But people do come first. And we are animals. So I agree, actually. I agree. So you, see, you, should, you, see, you should tell me. You should tell me. Um, I'll have to... I'm not a bit autistic. Well, my, my sister seems to think... Anyway. Um, we'll ha that's a good point, and I'll have to take that on board for when I talk about it in the upcoming episodes. Because I intend now to go away now to do what I'm supposed to do today, Dad's birthday. Then tomorrow... Tonight, I'm going to be late stream. So hopefully late stream tonight will be battery exhausted. So if I go to my channel, channels, the B-side channel, battery exhausted there. I'll be streaming here later on, Subnautica, hopefully. And then tomorrow, after that, is my mom's birthday, so we might have another interrupted day. And then the day after that, hopefully we can finish the week strong by reading through this book. I wanted to do it for ages. It's come up in the news. That's given us an avenue in. And thankfully... It's been agreed by the European Court of Human Rights that this is not libel. So what he's written is not libel. And that makes me think that if it's not libel, then it might be okay. Like what's the like the problem that McCann's have is if it if he's not telling the truth, then it's libelous, isn't it? If he's putting out spurious ideas, then it's libelous. Because he literally says he thinks that she died in the apartment and that somebody discovered the body and concealed it. That's what he literally says. So if that's not libel... Hmm. Oh yeah, you low-key agree, boss. Yeah, I, you know, I understand that. Like, you know, I remember some facts and have a funny attitude sometimes about emotions. Yeah. If you ever turn up missing, you want people discussing. You want to turn up, that's the thing. Turning up would be fine. It's the missing that's the problem. Yeah, you would want people discussing it, yeah. I don't even think she's missing. Like, there's no evidence that says to me that she's missing. There's loads of evidence that says they know where she is. We've seen it just quickly. We've seen there's the photographs and like we'll go through the book, but I don't even think she's missing. That whole idea that she's where is she? She's missing. Whose idea? Whose idea was that? That's her parents come up with that. The police don't think that. So. Um, yeah, but you, like you said at the very start of this episode, you probably didn't hear all the stuff the police said. Because they were busy on the, on the news saying other stuff. And whilst I don't really believe in necessarily all the PSYOP stuff, you know, I understand that the MI5 are working behind the scenes to create terrorism. I understand that uh, uh, the media are working hand in hand with the lawyers and detect some private detectives on the Madly I'm a Can fighting fund from the right-wing media. Yeah, absolutely. 
Um, and in terms of psyops, I just think when it's handy, they bring it out again. When it's useful to distract, because you know the people that run those right wing newspapers are the people that are going to get profitable from Liz Truss, aren't they? So like, they just use it to distract the bewildered herd. Um, it was, uh, was it Cohen, the bewildered herd? Or um, Noam Chomsky, of course, Noam Chomsky. Noam Chomsky's co concept that the way that you control a populace is to confuse them, the bewildered herd, media coverage of international conflicts and public opinion. This is somebody else. This is not Chomsky here, but the idea is simply that you confuse them with, with things that they can't really gr grasp properly, and then they're they fail to see the wood for the trees right in front of them. These days, people think there's some shadow cabal, you know, there's like a, 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 an Illuminati behind the scenes. And that's something I used to think when I was like 14, but now I'm a bit more worldly wise. I realise they're not even hiding. They're just doing it in plain sight. So, um, so yeah. Didn't mean any harm. Thinking, yeah, I know, absolutely. I don't feel like... You shouldn't, I get the impression from your comments here, Rudy, that you're feeling um, uh, guilty or um, feeling, like there's no negativity coming here from toward you. You're not a terrible person. <laughs> well, you might be, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but I'm certainly not reading your comments in the negative and feeling attacked by them. Absolutely not. So that's fine. Um, Roger, will you be playing Subnautica? Yes. You have Thalassophobia, so that game's spooky for me. Wow, I wonder what Thalassophobia is. My guess is being submerged in water. But I'll find out right now. Thalassa, sea, and Phobos, fear. The persistent intense fear of deep bodies of water. Like they say, yeah, do you know what? I might not have it, like, oh, it's shaky. But you put me on a little boaty in the sea, and fuck, I'm not happy with it. How far down it goes, and the fact you can't see anything there. Ooh, I don't like it. But hopefully... Maybe in Subnautica it won't be like that. I'm hoping it'll be chilled. It might not be. I might be wrong. I'm looking for something chilled because, like, the fact in Subnautica is you can see around and you've got access to tools. So maybe you'll feel less less uh, abandoned in the sea, like I do when I'm in the sea. Um, you're talking about feeling deep waters. Noam Chomsky says <laughs> narrative. No, which is it? Uh, I don't. Noam Chomsky comes up with some really good ideas. I don't think everything he says is absolutely bang on, but I do think a lot of the things he says is bang on, so I'm happy with him, and I see him as a good thought leader. Um, they doped her. She died as GPS, both parents with friends. Yeah, yeah. I'm happy to go with that as well, you know. I think there's a lot of evidence to suggest that they doped her. The fact they found sedative drugs in their, in their bags, that's one part of the evidence, isn't it? Uh, and the fact they're both doctors, you could imagine, and the way they were dispassionate, and like I was earlier, the way they weren't so, you know, they went for a meal with their mates and the children had to be locked in the room. Uh, it feels a little bit like they're slightly careless or heartless in that way, and therefore you could put two and two together. That's conjecture that I'm very happy to go with, but what I want to talk through on the episodes is the actual facts of the matter. Uh, but I'm certainly, you know, I, I would say, yeah, that sounds like a good, sounds like a more sensible story to me than someone opened the window, reached in, took our daughter from the other side of the room. So she'd have had to get out the bed, go over to the window in order to, or they climbed in the window and got her and then climbed out the window with her, which I don't know if you've ever tried to climb out the window with a child, but it's not that easy, is it? You need your hands. <laughs> if you're carrying a child, you haven't got your hands. Firemen find it difficult, and then walked around. Like I don't, I just find it very strange to think that someone might open a window and take a child, and then be able to just walk around with them, and that the child wouldn't kick off in any way. No one would hear any screaming. Uh, like it all that, all that sounds fucking weird. Like I couldn't imagine that happening. I could imagine someone stealing a child and there being a big kerfuffle, but then you know I don't know. So what do I know? But uh, these are different. Um, he agreed with. I don't know what that is. NIST 9-11. Have a look. We'll have a look. Uh, if it says it's a conspiracy, I'm down with that. Oh, National Institute of Standards and Technology. The t likely technical causes. Like there are some weird. There's some weirdness about 9-11, isn't there? There's some weirdness. You know, drones, planes, what we now know of as drones 
you know, we've seen planes that are drones now. There is some weirdness. There is some strangeness. There is some um, untold story behind it that we're not being we're not being told. I'm sure. Yeah, especially as, like, obviously we know that the American government funded Osama bin Laden and Al-Qaeda, and uh, they used them, they, they were on the same team during the Chechen conflict, and they funded them, you know, they paid for the, uh, what are they called, the Mujahideen to exist, and then, uh, like, flew Osama bin Laden's family into America to uh, prevent them from, because they're wealthy oil people. You know, there's all this behind-the-scenes shit. Well, that's a different story, isn't it? That's a totally different story. Um... There were GP, oh, GPs, I see what you mean, GPs, the backbone of the jet. Yeah, uh, they were, well, yeah, yeah. Learning to become a doctor at university could be a really noble thing, couldn't it? Could be a really noble thing, you just want to help people. Or you could be a really selfish bugger and you're looking for the most well-paid job where you can command respect and, you know, be better than anyone else. Uh, I don't know about every particular individual GP. There can be different reasons for doing things. I can certainly see from the McCann's behaviour that they were quite interested in becoming millionaires and taking the money from the fighting fund and having it for themselves because they became millionaires when they took the money from the fighting fund and had it for themselves. So I can see that. That definitely happened. That's not even libel. That's a fact. They, they, they put themselves on the board of directors and they changed the, the reason it existed to, be, to pay for their lifestyle. So, you know, yeah. Sea monsters... I'm a bit scared of sea monsters. I tell you that it's the the sea is the monster, isn't it? The wide open vastness, the the fear of um, who knows what's coming next. You know, the sea is the monster. Yeah, so I'm glad that we introduced this nicely. I'm glad that I've ma managed to cover that. I mean, if I never do a Madeline, in my if they, MI5 can take me out tonight, at least you know why. <laughs> um, it's because of these chuffers. This is the big problem. These chuffers. And overall, I don't even think Madney I. McKen's parents were that switched on to the big big scheme initially. I think they were just caught in their lie. Initially, they said, oh, we didn't do it. Uh, can you help find our daughter? The media thing got big. The right-wing media people turned up, along with the right-wing lawyers, along with the right-wing, you know, snides. And uh, they started to twist the situation. They said, all right, we know you did it. And we're going to fuck you over unless you do it our way. And the parents probably thought, well, fuck it, we'll do it their way. We get to be millionaires. Um, you know, something like that probably happened, if, in my opinion. Uh, and I think that uh, they pull it out of the bag every time they need to disguise something that really should be headline news. So that's coming up on this week. <laughs> I'm going to go now because I have to just tidy up a bit, wear some clothes. Go out. I mean, I've only got 20 minutes and I need to be out. So you be good, my little Pukosh. You be good. And if you can't be good, 